That heat. Computers generate a lot of heat, and in order to dissipate that heat, they use computer fans like this one right here. Obviously, the more air they push through, the better they are at cooling. And over the past few years, YouTubers have experimented using different fan setups to push increasingly higher amounts of air through their computers. I'm going to blow every single one of these people out of the water. Let me show you. This is my real jet engine. It sucks half a liter of jet fuel every minute. And if you were to convert that number into watts, you'd find that this jet puts out over 15,000 watts of rotational power. More than 20 times as powerful as any fan tested on Linus Texas channel. Oh, and you hear how deafening it is? Believe it or not, this is at idle, which is a cool 40,000 RPM. First things first though, we need a control test. David does tech stuff, a tech YouTuber and good friend of mine sent me this PC to use for this video. It's got an AMD FX 9830P and a GT710. I know, not the most powerful stuff, but it didn't have anything else to test with it, so whatever. The ambient temperature in my room is 23 degrees Celsius. After 5 minutes of Cinebench, the CPU hit a temperature of 88 degrees Celsius, which is 65 degrees Celsius over ambient. So now that we got that out of the way, it's time to mount the jet engine to the PC. Unfortunately, Cooler Masters engineers, in their complete idiocy, neglected to put a jet engine mount onto their computer case, so I'm just gonna have to make one using scrap metal I've lying around. Alright, it's now time to install the jet. And right about now, you might be thinking, wait, jet engines create heat. And so mounting a jet engine to a PC would just move heat inside. So in order to cool it, I actually have to mount it backwards. Though later in the video, I will be mounting it forwards. Surely nothing can go wrong. So now that the PC was done, it was time to go test it. But as I was walking to the testing site, I realized I made a fatal mistake. Wait, uh, shit. We can't actually do this. Why? Um, so basically what I realized was that the jet puts out 17 kilograms of thrust, and the computer weighs, well, I don't know exactly how much it weighs, but I know it was a lot less than 17 kilograms, which means there's a very real possibility the computer will literally start flying away, out of control. And as much as I would love to see that, I really can't risk the possibility of injuring my poor jet engine, or myself or other people. After a quick trip back home and making some further modifications to the jet PC, I was finally ready to test it once and for all. The ambient temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. Let's look at the temperatures and 26,000 RPM. Uh, idle is 40,000. Oh. Shit, holy shit. Oh. That was, um, I think we need more weight. Shit. Holy shit. Oh my. So we just added some uh, rocks and uh, hopefully it doesn't move now. It appears to have reduced the temp by 10 degrees, which means yes, a jet engine can cool a computer. Before I end the video though, I did promise to show you what would happen if I were to mount the jet so that the hot air exhausts in the case. Enjoy. <laughs> Oh, something popped. <laughs> oh, something shorted. Yeah, it's done. 